Okay, Leslie, uh, congratulations on the win. Just uh, one simple question. The last play from scrimmage, 32 seconds left, third and one. You blitz seven guys. Just did you did you think they were throwing and was your heart in your throat? You know, they had the option on third and one to run it or pass it. And, um, you know, we went with the pressure that we did and hoping that we'd be able to handle either uh, the run or the pass. Uh, and you're just trusting the, the players and trusting the execution. And when that's the case, Mark, you don't have to have your heart beating too fast. Just trust the process. And fortunately for us, it worked out. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie. Uh, how did you feel Tredavious was out there in his limited role in the return? No, he really did a good job, uh, John. Uh, it was so exciting for all of us to see him back in the starting lineup. It gave all of us a boost in, in the snaps that he was able to perform in. Uh, you know, he graded, you know, very high. I think John Butler, the rest of our staff, uh, we were excited uh, with what he did in the, in the number of attempts that he had. So hopefully we can build on that in our next ball game, but we were really pleased with what we saw. And I know you were asked, I think, about Dane even after the last game, but another one where he was heavily targeted, a lot of yeah. action over there. How would you assess his performance? Yeah, I mean, you're right. They definitely went after him uh, often and early, and uh, there were some times where he stood up and made some plays, and there were some times uh, the opponent made some plays as well, and that's going to happen at that corner spot. Uh, you just got to make enough plays to get him off of you. And I know he'll continue to work as hard as he can to uh, find a way to get a pick on one of those, uh, one of those plays, an interception. And that'll, that'll back him away a little bit. But uh, he'll, he'll get better. He'll continue to get better. And lastly for me, uh, obviously, on the edge, you guys are depleted. Uh, one of the guys that's still standing is Shaq Lawson. Is there anything you've noticed differently with Shaq, his play on the field, demeanor, anything, this time around than when you first had him, uh, you know, a few years ago? You know, John, you remember he was a good player for us prior to leaving in free agency. And probably the difference now is he's definitely matured as a person. Uh, his plate is a little bit more full when it comes to life responsibilities. Uh, but his maturity in the classroom, his preparation as well, he's grown in that area. And the way he views football, I mean, he, he looks at it every single snap like this might be my last snap, snap. and I'm not, not so sure that was the case when he was here before. So his attitude and his approach is, is a little bit different in that way, and it shows on the field. He plays hard every single down uh, as if this is my last down playing, and that's, that's good for us. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie. Obviously, um, you know, Sean already ruled out Vaughn for uh, this game coming up against the Patriots. Just, I mean, how tough is that when you're already dealing with major injuries to your defense um, and then not having him out there, not only what he does on the field, but just from a leadership standpoint as well. Yeah, Vaughn has been uh, so valuable to us. And you mentioned it, not just on the field, but what he does off the field from a leadership standpoint has been invaluable. And it was an intangible, we didn't really see coming. Uh, but it's helped our young players on our defensive line, helped our veteran players as well. His example in the classroom, obviously his playmaking uh, makes a difference, but his communication and, and being able to share with guys what he looks at on tape, all those things, I think it has helped our defensive line. So it'll be a big loss. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat that and say it's not. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a very important cog to what we do. Uh, but that also means that provides an opportunity for someone else and we just need the other guys to step up and, uh, and, and, and make plays when they have an opportunity to make plays. Yeah, speaking of making plays, Ed Oliver, um, there's just something, something in the water about him playing on Thanksgiving, I guess, <laughs> just with all the splash plays that he was able to make in that game and just how his development, he just keeps taking those steps. Uh, is this what you guys envisioned when you drafted him back in 2019, just making all of these impact plays uh, constantly like this. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's just what we envision. And I'm like you, we should play every day should be every Sunday should be Thanksgiving for, for Ed. Cause 
man, he uh, he really raises his game to another level on Thanksgiving Day. So a terrific job by him yesterday. So many impact plays that uh, really changed the game in a lot of ways, in particular that safety that he he got for us. And then the calls from us, he just was a record, a game record in the way he played. But uh, we needed that from him uh, with some of the other things that we're dealing with injury-wise. And he's more than capable of doing that week in and week out. And we expect to see it the rest of the season. He's had moments like that this year, but because of the injuries early on, it kind of set him back a little bit. And probably about a week or so ago, two weeks ago, he really began to round in the form. So uh, it looks like he's back to being Ed Oliver, and that's really good for our defense. Sean even said when I asked him about it, he said that this is kind of what we're seeing from Ed in those games. That's kind of like the new standard for him and his game. Is that kind of how you see that for Ed? Yeah, you know, he finished the season so strong for us a year ago, and he kind of set a standard in his play. And then we had the high ankle sprain, I think, uh, after the second game or right at the first game and missed you know, a lot of time. Uh, it took him a bit to get back, but he's, he's getting to that point now. And based on yesterday, he's back to that standard uh, for sure where he's making those splash plays time in and time out, which is what we need uh, from him and, and a few of our other guys as well, especially in the absence of Bond. Thanks, Leslie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yes, good afternoon, uh, uh, Coach Frazier, George Radney, Challenger Community News. Hello, George. Yes, a question I have for you today. Oh, just your overall interior, even though you're down on the outside on the edge rushers, how would you rate your interiors? Uh, Tim Sutto, uh, Jaquan uh, Jones, seem like even with that goal line stand of a, uh, against the Vikings, and those guys seem like they really picked their game up, the level of play, and also Ed Oliver, of course, uh, Seem like they really picked their level of play. They starting to peak. Yeah, really pleased. We're really pleased with our defensive uh, interior. Our tackles are doing a really good job. Our defensive line as a whole, but uh, speaking about our D tackles, uh, that run game that we faced yesterday, those guys had rushed for like 160 the week before and to hold them to less than 100 yards and then to 3.4 yards per carry. A lot of that has to do, George, with Daquan, with uh, Jordan Phillips, uh, of course, what Ed was doing, Tim Settle, those guys did a terrific job. Uh, so our interior has been a plus plus throughout the season, and uh, we expect nothing different as we go forward. Yes, yes indeed. Thank you. Thank, uh, good luck next week, Coach. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, I know you guys take it one game at a time, but it's kind of unique that the next three games are against AFC opponents. So how meaningful is this next stretch for you guys? And what's the uniqueness level of playing three straight games against uh, division opponents? Well, you said it, man. It's one game at a time, and it's all about uh, this next opponent. Uh, we really have to play extremely well when we go on the road uh, against New England and try to find a way to get a win. Uh, and that will set us up for the next ball game and the next ball game. Uh, but it starts with this game next week and really being able to put together a good game plan and now being able to go out and execute at a high level. Anytime you're playing against AFC opponents, in particular one in your division, it just raises your awareness of what you have to get done. Uh, but in particular in this case, uh, because it's a team uh, within our division, uh, we really got to be focused on what we have to get done with this team and that, as I mentioned, sets us up for some of the things we'll be doing going forward. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie. Um, I asked Sean about this uh, a few minutes ago, and I think it was Daryl Johnson who, on the broadcast a few weeks ago, mentioned about Tremaine Edmonds and throws that quarterbacks don't even think about making when he's out there. And I know that you guys are so good at, like, you know, replacing guys next man up and everything like that, but how much of the struggles maybe in the passing game without Tremaine Edmonds are there because of those throws that quarterbacks might be attempting that they wouldn't if he was there? I, I definitely think, uh, Matt, that it, that it makes a difference, and I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, Tremaine's length, uh, we've seen it time and time again over the course of his career. Uh, it really affects quarterbacks. They're not sure uh, where they have to throw the football when it comes to trying to get balls over the middle or even sometimes uh, between the numbers uh, because of his length and his range. So, we miss him for sure and look forward to when he's back. Uh, we still have to be able to make some of those plays out on the perimeter, uh, but his, 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 his absence has definitely made a difference. Awesome. Thanks, Les. I appreciate it. You're welcome.
Coach Frazier, Mookie Hawkins, Local Sports Cincinnati. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mookie. You made it back home. Yeah, I made it back home, man. The snow's melted, yeah. so, you know, I'm kind of cool. Kind of look like Detroit out here right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, it does. Hey, gutsy win yesterday, Coach. Gutsy, another gutsy performance. And, you know, I know that, you know, you guys pride yourselves on, you know, making the open field tackles. And you have been mixing things up, putting guys in position to make those plays. But in certain situations, the fundamentals kind of fall short. What do you think the problem lies at? Uh, when we miss tackles, it's usually – you know, we're, we're out of line a little bit, whether we're leaning too far forward or we're not bringing our feet or we're taking a bad angle to the football. So some of the fundamental things that you have to work through practice and when you don't practice like we have in the last few days, then maybe some of those things may show up, some of those fundamental flaws. So it looks like this week we're going to be able to get a full practice in and hopefully we can get back to some of those fundamentals when it comes to tackling and that will help us uh, when we get ready for our next opponent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's no secret to what New England does offensively. So what are your impressions of Ramondre Stevenson and how tough of a task do he presents to a defense? Man, he's really having a terrific season. Uh, you know, guys <laughs> are having a tough time tackling him. And, uh, he, he's a good running back and they're using him in, a, in multiple ways. Not only is he getting the ball on handoffs, but he's catching the ball out of the backfield as well. So uh, he's a good player having an outstanding year and we're going to have our hands full we're trying to curtail him for sure. Absolutely, Coach, and um, I know it was all, everybody was all, you know, pumped up to see Trey White get out there. Um, what did you see in him that let you know that he's capable enough to play in a full game? Well, just the fact that uh, he got out there, that was enough to get us excited. <laughs> and then when he was there, look, he was he was in position. Uh, he looked confident in, in what he was doing, uh, seeing him turn and run, playing and drive, just doing some of the things that he did prior to his injury. Uh, just lets you know that he's he's really close to uh, maybe adding some more plays and eventually getting to the point where he can play an entire game. But uh, based on that short sample size, he looks like uh, he's ready for more. And that's what we plan on doing in this next ball game, giving him more. Appreciate your time, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Coach Frazier? Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Pat Freeman from the Buffalo Criterion newspaper. I wanted to just piggyback off that because I noticed um, in the Green Bay game in Minnesota, uh, your younger uh, defensive backs that you had in the game, they were caught in some bad angles. What did you work on the last couple of games where it looks like uh, they were taking better angles of pursuit, especially in the run game? What we tried to do, Pat, was show them on tape, you know, some of those areas where we were deficient when it comes to taking angles and how we were tackling. Uh, now, as Mookie mentioned a moment ago, there were some moments yesterday where we didn't quite take the best angles or we were a little bit out of line when it comes to approaching the ball carrier to make those tackles. Although, overall, I thought we tackled well enough. Uh, but when usually when something goes awry, uh, we'll go back, we'll look at the tape, uh, we'll try to make those corrections on the field with our fundamental work and our individual periods. And that's what we did uh, with our young safeties, just take them back through some of the basic fundamentals of what we have to do. Unfortunately, over the last few days, you know, we haven't been able to practice other than walkthroughs, so it's been a little bit more challenging, but we'll be able to get back to that uh, this upcoming week. And my last question to you, Coach, I know I've mentioned uh, and asked you about this young man's play. Uh, but Matt Milano is taking it to another level. He's always played well, but he has really become a, a main cog of making plays uh, for your defense. How important has he been for you? Oh, he's, he's been outstanding, as you mentioned. Uh, and he's definitely taken this game to another level. So much more confident, and it shows in his play. Uh, he's anticipating plays, pulling the trigger. He's not waiting for something to happen. He's making it happen. And uh, it's been really good for us. Uh, he's an impact player. He can do multiple things. He's not just a really good blitzer. He can cover. Uh, he can support the run. Uh, he's good at, at disguising and making things hard for quarterbacks. He's just a good all-around football player, and we're fortunate to have him. All right. Thank you, Coach. Good luck to you. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, we've heard so much about what it may, meant to get Trey back out there just to see him a bit. What was the actual conversation like knowing – how long this has taken, how much he's been going through behind the scenes, just, you know, for you guys to get to tell him, hi, you're going to finally play. 
Well, it was, uh, you know, early in the week, we, we had an idea it was going to work out that way. Uh, short week, uh, but it was something that we talked about. And each day, Captain, leading up to the ball game, that Monday, that Tuesday, that Wednesday, leading before we left going to Detroit, uh, you know, we had conversations. And in every conversation, you could see the excitement uh, within him. And so although his teammates were all excited, and you, which you would expect, uh, but the excitement was there for him. It was, it was self-motivated. It wasn't like we had to talk him into being excited about playing, which is a good thing, you know? And so because of that, I mean, all of our confidence levels were high because of his confidence and his wanting to get on the football field. It was a desire of his and, and to play in games. So uh, there was a level of comfort there, and, and we were all excited. And then he goes out and he plays extremely well. But the conversations were all positive leading up, into the, up, up to the game. He had told us weeks ago that he he was predicting that when he did come back, like teammates would be more excited than he would be at the start. Just I think because he was trying to to temper his expectations. What did you see? Though, like, did he have a moment where it really hit him? Of oh my gosh, after almost a year, I'm I'm going to get to play again. You know, we talked in the uh, dining hall the night before the game, and we were about to have our meeting. And I said, you know, you've been coming to these games of late and you just go to your room and relax and turn the TV on and chill. I said, well, it's going to be a little bit different tonight. You're going to have to think about your responsibilities, what you got to get done. He said, I know. He said, I'm beginning to get a little bit of the butterflies now. You know, it's different that I've got to think about my assignment, what my technique, uh, what some of the calls are. And to his credit, you know, he's been kind of putting himself in that mindset along the way. But the night before this ball game, it was reality. This is the real thing. I've got to get ready to play, which is good. And then he went out and he played extremely well. And then to jump to Von Miller, I know you've talked about him some already. And at one point you were saying how it sounds like he exceeded expectations when it came to those intangibles of everything he does behind the scenes. Um, Ed Oliver last night was saying how, you know, even if he's not able to be on the field, he's doing so much to better this team outside of just what we see in games where have you seen that the most of what he's added to this team outside of like the 60 minutes on Sundays? I think Catherine, when I get a chance to sit in and some of the defensive line meetings and just watch his approach when they're watching tape and also at the practice field, but in particular behind the scenes in the meetings and hearing his conversation, uh, hearing his, some of his thoughts as he's watching tape and, and looking at offensive linemen and what he looks at that really helps our young players, whether it's Greg Russo or A.J. Vanessa or Carlos Basham, uh, Ed, uh, for those young guys uh, to hear Vaughn's process and his willingness to share how he goes about things and how he approaches opponents. I mean, that's good not only for our young guys, but for our veteran guys like Jordan Phillips, Daquan Jones, and other players as well, Shaq. Uh, so it's been really good because you're talking about a very accomplished player a guy who's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day to be so open and vulnerable about his process uh, behind the scenes has really helped us. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie. Um, I had asked you last week about like the rotation going on in the secondary and how you're losing people, getting people. Now Christian's hurt and Trey's back and it's, it keeps going. But I was curious, what went into the decision to kind of have Christian play more over Kair yesterday? Was that kind of because Kair's coming back from injury or what kind of led to that? Yeah, that was more uh, it than anything, Elena, the fact that he was coming off of an uh, injury to his foot and he still had some residual pain. Uh, and on a short week, you know, we were trying our best if we didn't have to use him to maybe avoid that and let him get a few more days on a short week. But as it turned out, we needed him to go in and play, and he did a good job when he did. But that was it, no, no more than the, than the injury other, other than that. And I know we, we've talked a lot about the rookie's development and all that, but I had talked to Kair this week, and he had talked about, like, how he's gotten stuff from watching on the sideline, you know, like kind of pick stuff up from not playing and kind of had to be patient with it all. What have you kind of seen from him behind the scenes as he's working to get back to full health? Yeah, he, he's a uh, young man who works extremely hard in the, in the classroom. Uh, he spends the time studying the opponent and really getting a good feel for our game plan. That's one of the reasons with his combined with his talent. I think he's going to be a really good corner in this league, how hard he works on the, his preparation beyond just his physical ability, but the things he has to get done mentally as well. And that's a big part of a player's success. If he understands the importance of preparation, not just in the weight room, 
or running extra wind sprints, but film study, note taking, and then being able to apply that to the football field. And that's what we reserve uh, with Kyrie. And then just one more for me on Trey. I was just curious, obviously seeing how well he played in a very limited amount of snaps and kind of bringing him back in slowly. Is that hard at all? Obviously his health comes first and his availability, but you know, like, is there that part of you that's like, let's go, let's, <laughs> let's get him out there. Like he looks good. Like how, I don't know. I'm, obviously his health comes first and his ability to go, but what is that like for you? Like be like, he's let's go, like, let's play him. <laughs> well, you, you, you took the words out of my <laughs> mouth. Let's go. <laughs> selfishly, selfishly speaking, you know, you want to see him out there every down because you know the impact that he can have. But at the same time, medically, you got to do what's best for Trey and, and, and his long term future. So I fully understand the fact that we had him on a pitch count yesterday and, and why we were doing what we were doing. And hopefully uh, we can increase that and uh, to the point where he can play a full game. And, you know, we'll just go through this process. But it was great to have him out there yesterday. Thanks, Leslie. Well.